Everybody, this is the vehicle, and today we're going to talk a little bit about Sam Peckinpah. Sam Peckinpah is a filmmaker I want to like more than I do. The thing is that I've seen no, not every Peckinpah movie, but I've seen I think half of them. I think there's something that's always missing. There's always something that I want to be there that isn't there. He has a style of making that I like, but he has a psychological, you know, edge to his movies that I don't like and some of his movies are straight up not that good but one movie I can say that I absolutely 100% support him well at least almost 100% we'll see where we get to the ratings but that is of course the movie The Wild Bunch. The Wild Bunch truly revolutionized the art of making westerns and um, people usually point to Sergio Leone and the Dollar Trilogy of, as a way of uh, you know revitalizing and uh, making the western genres into something new but as good as those movies are spoiler alert two of them are actually better than uh, the wild bunch the thing is still that those movies were not really that influential on um, american way of making westerns who you know at this time had um, you know basically died out they were not the pos they were not the box office juggernaut they once were and were considered a relic of the past but Sam Peckinpah took a look at the script for The Wild Bunch and thought I can revolutionize uh, the western genre and so he did by the way um, the Dollar Trilogy mostly influenced other filmmakers in Italy, Spain uh, and stuff like that to make other spaghetti westerns who very rarely showed in the United States by the way as a slight little side note but the movie we're gonna take a look at today is a movie that is such a visceral experience and is almost flawless when it comes to his technical standpoint that I'm just flabbergasted on how excellent it is let's take a look at why this movie also sports the greatest and the absolute best you know Last Stand Blades of Glory sequence that has ever been made and you if you've seen it you know what I'm talking about but let's not waste any more time shall we this is the wild bunch The Wild Bunch consists of Ernst Borgnin, William Holden and a bunch of other people uh, and they are feeling that their time as criminals are coming to an end. The days of the, of the Wild West is pretty gone from here. This is the early 20th century, the years before uh, the First World War and they feel that their past is catching up to them, they feel that they're too old to really pull this off anymore and the loots are you know getting lower and lower for them and they flee to mexico hunted mercilessly by uh, robert ryan and his um, lawmen and uh, bounty hunters they align themselves with i would say a sort of a guerrilla military leader or something like that this is during the mexican revolution and by the way the dude that they're siding with he looks exactly like how you would depict a you know a banana republic dictator in the, in the 60s or something like that it is really much flash and really much evil um, the thing is that they are going to help him carry out some evil deeds in order to you know uh, do this one final job so they can retire however every time you hear the word final job you should be very careful because final job seems to not go out without hitches you could say so are they going to make it out of here i don't know you just have to look at the tagline for this movie out of all taglines i've ever seen for any movie i think this one just might be the greatest nine men came too late and stayed too long chills forever for that one so when it comes to the technical standpoint of this movie it is absolutely flawless 
The editing of this movie is magnificent. The depth of field, the cinematography, lightning, everything is absolutely tippity tippity top. The, 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 the way this movie is edited should be taught out in film classes so that you could show them how to make a movie feel big and enormous. And when it comes to the acting, it gets even fucking better. William Holden is fucking great. Ernst Borgen is fucking great. Robert Ryan is fucking great. The thing is that these characters are pretty unlikable when you're looking at them. These characters are pretty unsavory and kind of, you know, not very nice, but you still care about them. I don't know how they did it, but they somehow managed to do it. Because, you know, they're doing things that you don't agree with them at all about, including the a thing that they never did in any form of westerns, betraying, you know, one of the main characters for apparently no reason. I still have questions about it, but it was a bold thing to do, and, I'm, and I applaud them for trying something new. It is also the thing that you're feeling that, you know, Robert Ryan and William Holden does have a, you know, huge past together, and this makes this movie almost feels like the third movie in a series of movies about a wild bunch that doesn't exist. A little bit of, of a similar thing with Once Upon a Time in Mexico where I alluded to that this movie, that movie where I said that that movie was shot in a way that made you feel that you were watching a third movie uh, in a series of movies that only has two. In this movie you feel that you're watching the third movie in a series of movies that are one. And how they did that, I have no idea. But uh, it does make this movie feel even bigger. And the shootout looks absolutely flawless and fantastic. And it feels like, you know, you're, you're there. It feels raw and honest. Sergio Leone got a lot of flack for the violence in his movies. But the thing is, they're not that actually that violent if you're looking closer to them. You always see the consequences of violence, but not really that much, you know, drawn out violence as you would in a, you know, Saw movie or anything like that, which is a weird connection to make, but you're getting the point. The thing is that a movie like The Wild Bunch, the violence is earned because you have built up the characters so much that you do care about them and the violence feels more raw and, as I said, they, they, they feel earned. And the shootout looks so real and the, it feels so real. But we're of course all building up towards the ultimate showdown and the ultimate going out in a blades of glory thing, which you can almost see from the start is where this movie is heading. Is this movie flawless? Not quite. There are bits and pieces of it where the movie kind of drags a little bit and you don't know why this is happening or where this one is going. This might be done by design, but I, I still felt that there were sections of this movie that were not necessary and that I felt could have been scrapped altogether. It does that uh, nullify my, my praising for this movie being edited to perfection? I don't know. Maybe these, these sequences do have a place in this movie to build characters or build uh, atmosphere or build uh, a sense of time or something like that. But nevertheless, this movie does have a couple of sequences that don't quite measure up with the rest of the story. But that thing is overcorrected with the ending of this movie, which is one of my favorite sequences of all time. The build-up to it is so great. The execution of it is so great. And you're really feeling that this is an epic, one-of-a-kind showdown. If you've never seen The Wild Bunch, I would advise you to see it because it is actually that damn good, you guys. It is one of these classics that really, really holds up. If you don't really like westerns, I don't think this was gonna sway you in any way, but if you like westerns but somehow hasn't seen this one, you must check this one out. You must see this one. If you are a little squeamish when it comes to violence, I probably would advise you not to see this one either. This movie feels different than other westerns. This movie feels roar, harder, and it has a slightly weird, sad tone to it that you rarely see in uh, westerns at this time. Um, they would make, you know, later movies that you would incorporate this more melancholy uh, atmosphere to it, but in this case, it is just one of these movies that um, was ahead of its time. It still holds up, and if you've never seen it, I would advise you to see it. Some people might get a little bored in the second act because it might feel a little plodding, but 
in general, I will say that this movie is freaking amazing. I should also mention that the flashbacks in this movie gives this movie an even bigger scope and makes this movie feel even bigger. In this case, I thought that the flashbacks helped this movie a lot and made it even better. Because sometimes it can get a little ridiculous and sometimes it can detract from the, you know, actual story. But in this case, it worked fantastic. The Wild Bunch is a Western classic. I give this movie 88 points. It has fantastic visuals. It is a great spectacle. It has great symbolisms to it. It has great characters to it. It has great character arcs and it also features some of the greatest shootouts I've ever seen. I've seen greatest too many times now I think and it has a fantastic villain and it has you know the uncertainty of what's actually gonna happen in the end even though you kind of get the feeling where this one's going. One of the few flaws I can find in this movie is the soundtrack. The soundtrack isn't that exciting and has a little bit of an uh to it. But to be fair, they can all be Sergio Leone Westerns, can they? But um, for the most part, I think this movie fucking rocks. So, I'll see you next time for well, so-and-so reviewing well, such and such. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much.